So in this video, we're gonna talk about induction machines, calculating air gap power, synchronous speed, and torque in various different units. The problem states, a three-phase induction motor with five pole pairs draws 55 kilowatts of power from a 60 hertz AC power supply. The stator copper losses are 7 kW, and the stator iron core losses are 1.5 kW. Example one, calculate the rotor air gap power in kilowatts. Example number two, determine the synchronous speed of the motor in RPMs. Example number three, determine the synchronous speed of the motor in radians per second. Example number four, calculate the motor torque in newton meters. And example five, calculate the motor torque in foot pounds of force. Well, let's get started. So if we wanna calculate the rotor air gap power, the first thing we're gonna do is draw a motor power flow diagram. Again, this is on page 57 of your version 1.1.2 NCES reference handbook under the section 4.2.5 three phase induction motor power flow. Over here on the left, we have the active power input to the stator. That's gonna be P in. Leaving the stator, we have two different types of losses. We have the stator copper losses and we have the stator core losses. Everything that makes it out of the stator is going to be our air gap power, also known as our rotor power. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the losses red just so they stand out. And we're gonna go ahead and fill in the values from the problem. So right up here, this motor is drawing 55 kilowatts of power. So that's our input power P in, 55 kilowatts. Next, right here at the top, our stator copper losses are 7 kW, and the stator iron core losses are 1.5 kW. We can now calculate the air gap power, or the rotor power, by subtracting the total sum of our stator copper losses and our stator core losses from our input power. So P air gap equals P in, minus the sum of our stator copper losses and our stator core losses. Filling in the values, P in is 55 kW minus the sum of 7 kW and 1.5 kW. Pulling up our calculator, we've got 55 minus parentheses seven plus 1.5. And this comes out to 46.5 kilowatts. And that is the answer for example number one for the air gap power. Example number two, determine the synchronous speed of the motor, very important here in RPMs. So this formula, synchronous speed in RPMs, equals 120 times the frequency of the AC power divided by the P number of poles in the motor. This comes from handbook page 50 under section 4.1.1.2, synchronous speed. Now, before we plug in any numbers and solve for this, let's look at what the problem says. Problem says there are five pole pairs, not five poles, but five pole pairs. So over here on the right, to explain what that means is, I've got a diagram of a classic bar magnet. Maybe it's the type of magnet you played with as a kid, but let's pretend this is the north pole of that bar magnet and the south pole of that bar magnet. This bar magnet represents a single pole pair. In other words, I have one, two poles in every pair, right? And even just the word pair means two of something. So if I have two poles in every pair, and this motor has five pole pairs, then the variable P for the number of poles in our synchronous speed formula is gonna equal five, the number of pairs, times two for two poles in every pair, or this motor really has 10 poles. All right, let's go ahead and substitute these values into our formula and solve for the synchronous speed of this motor in RPMs. On top, we've got 120, that's just a constant, times the frequency 
of the power applied to the motor, which is 60 hertz according to the problem. And on the bottom, we've got a total number of 10 poles that we already figured out over on the right side of the screen. All right, back in our calculator, I'm gonna hit the fraction button, 120 times 60, move to the denominator with the down arrow, type in 10 and press enter. And we get this motor has a synchronous speed of 720 RPM or revolutions per minute. And that is the answer for example number two. Example number three asks for the synchronous speed of the motor, but this time in radians per second. So all we're doing here is just converting units. So first I'm gonna start with the synchronous speed of the motor in RPMs. That's what we solved for in the previous example, example number two. And we're gonna convert from RPMs to radians per second. Unfortunately, there is no real formula in the reference handbook to do this, but it's really simple. Over here on the right, I just have a simple graph and I'm gonna draw a quick circle on it. So here's our circle. In order to make one complete trip around this circle, we can say that this is equal to one revolution. We can say it's equal to 360 degrees, or hopefully you're familiar with radians, it's also equal to two pi radians. So looking at this diagram, we know one revolution equals two pi radians. And we're gonna use this conversion factor to help us convert from RPMs to radians per second. So I'm gonna copy our 720 down here below. And then instead of RPM, I'm gonna write this as 720 revolutions per minute. Next step, let's go ahead and cancel out revolutions for radians. Since revolutions are on top, we need to have revolutions down here on the bottom. And again, we know that one revolution or one complete circle equals two pi radians. Last, we're gonna get our minutes to cancel two seconds. Minutes are down here at the bottom. That means we need to write the unit of minutes here on top to make sure they cancel. And everyone's familiar with the clock we know that for every one minute, we have 60 seconds. All right, let's check our units before moving forward. Notice that revolutions on top cancels with revolutions on bottom. Minutes on bottom cancels with minutes on top. And we're left in the units that we're looking for, which is of course radians per second. All right, we're now ready to put this in our calculator and solve for the synchronous speed of this motor in radians per second. Back in our calculator, I can hit second answer or just scroll up and bring our 720 RPMs back down. Then all I'm doing left to right is multiplying by two pi over 60. And that's gonna give us a synchronous speed of 24 pi in the units of radians per second. If we wanted to, we could also see what this is in numerical value. 24 pi is also equal to 75.4 radians per second, in case maybe your answer choice didn't include pi. And that is the final answer for example number three. All right, example number four asks to calculate the torque of the motor in Newton meters. Now, before we do that, we're gonna talk about the various torque formulas in the handbook and talk about how we chose the one that I'm about to use to solve example number four. So the first three torque formulas over here on the left, they're all on page 57 of your reference handbook, version 1.1.2, under the section 4.2.4, electrical machine theory. The first one is the torque equals the air gap power over synchronous speed, W sync for radians per second. The next is torque equals P converted or P mechanical, same thing, over WM or omega M, which is the rotor speed of the motor in radians per second. And the next one is torque equals three over your synchronous speed with various circuit parameters here. The fourth torque formula here on the right actually shows up in two different places in the reference handbook. Whether that's a mistake or not, or whether they're only gonna have it once in a future revision, we'll see. But for the time being in version 1.1.2 of the reference handbook, this formula shows up on page 50 under the header 4.1.1.1, power, torque, and speed relationships. 
and it shows up on page 52 under the header 4.2.1.1, again, power, torque, and speed relationships. Now this formula relates our output power to our torque in Newton meters. All right, so back to this first one over here on the left. We already solved for the air gap power. We already solved for omega sinc, the synchronous speed in radians per second. So it's pretty obvious that we're gonna wanna use this first formula. But before we solve example number four, let's talk about why these other torque formulas are not applicable in this particular problem. The next one down here, solves for torque using the converted power or PM, mechanical power, same thing, divided by omega m or wm, which is the speed of the rotor in radians per second. Now here's the thing. The only way we could calculate our converted power or the mechanical power is if we know the rotor losses, right? We don't know that information. We also don't know slip. So we don't know slip, we can't calculate the rotor speed using the synchronous speed. And we also don't know the rotor speed either in the problem statement. So this formula, we cannot use it to solve for the torque of this motor because that information is not given in the problem. Next one down here, we've got omega sync. That's okay, we already solved for that. We have that information, but we don't know the voltage applied to the motor. And then R2 over S, the rotor slip resistance from the equivalent circuit, we don't know that. And R1, X1, and X2, these are the stator and rotor impedances. We don't know these values, right? These all come from your circuit analysis parameters when you're modeling an induction motor in a single phase equivalent motor circuit. So this form is more applicable to calculating the torque when you've got all the information handy to fill in or complete that induction motor equivalent circuit. So this formula also does not help us for this problem. And the last one, the last one over here, the formula that relates output power to torque in newton meters. Again, we do not know the rotor speed. This is the rotor speed in RPMs. This is the rotor speed in radians per second. We can convert back and forth using that conversion factor we already did earlier in the video. However, we don't know the actual rotor speed in the problem, and we also don't know the slip of the motor, which allows us to convert from synchronous speed to rotor speed and vice versa. So again, this formula also will not help us in this problem. All right, let's go ahead and use this formula over here, P air gap over omega sync for torque, and solve example number four. So earlier on in example number one, we solved for the air gap power of this motor, turned out to be 46.5 kilowatts. And in example number three, we solved for the synchronous speed of this motor in radians per second, came out to 24 pi. Here's our calculator. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scroll up until I see 46.5. That's our air gap power we solved for earlier. Careful, don't forget to include times 10 to the three since it's kilowatts, not watts and then divide by, scroll up, and grab R24 pi. Here's a trick. Anytime you're scrolling up to bring a value back down in your calculator, if that value is on the denominator of your fraction like it is here, you have to press the second button on your calculator to kind of hold your spot while you go and search for that answer. Only need to do that if the value that you're trying to enter in is on the denominator. All right, let's go ahead and hit enter, and we get a motor torque of 616.7 Newton meters. And that is the answer to example number four. Last example problem of the video, example number five, calculate the same torque of the motor, but except this time in imperial units of foot pounds force. Uh, you'll notice in the official NCEES practice exam, they have a question where you have to calculate the motor torque in the imperial units of foot-pound force. You'll notice there is no formula currently in the reference handbook to do that. So how do we convert? Well, we already know what the Newton meters of the torque is. So we can go to page two of our reference handbook under 1.2 conversion factors and scroll down until you see in the reference handbook, multiply Newton meters by the conversion factor 0 0.7 three 
seven six to convert to foot pounds of force. So from example number four, here's our motor torque in Newton meters. And all we're gonna do is multiply it by our conversion factor of 0 0.7376, which is really in the unit of foot pounds force per Newton meters. So that Newton meters cancel and we're gonna get our answer. So back in the calculator, the last value is already our torque in Newton meters. So I'm just saying times 0 0.7376, and that's gonna give us a motor torque of 454.9 foot-pounds force in imperial units. And that is the final answer to example number five. Hope you enjoyed this video, hope it helped, and especially hope that helped trying to identify which of the different torque formulas in the reference handbook to use, depending on the information given in the problem. We'll see you in the next video.